What's going on YouTube? Today we got how NBA players got their jersey numbers. Um <laughs> Let's get into it. Now you yeah, think know. NBA players chat. choose their jersey numbers random, chat. but there's secrets behind how players got that. Like one player got his number because he was I'm, bullied into it. I would never think they chose it randomly. What? If a bad, all bad players player know you, you always got your, you know what I'm saying? You want run. a jersey, you but want that number for a reason. the weirdest ways a player reason. got his number is Clay Thompson's, because he didn't even choose his just, number. You know, it chose him, and the story behind it started with how Clay grew up. As a kid, mm. Clay lived in the 11th house on the 11th lane, and not only that, the K in his name is the 11th letter of the alphabet, and he always thought these 11s were just a coincidence. But everything changed in 2011. This was the year Clay's dreams had a chance to become reality at the mm. NBA draft. And one by one, the picks came in. With the first pick in the 2011 NBA draft, Kyrie Irving with the second pick, with the third pick, fourth pick. If he was the 11th pick, pick too. With the eighth pick, the ninth pick, 10th pick, with the 11th pick in the 2011 NBA Nah, son, nah, that shit crazy. I ain't gonna lie. That's crazy. That's crazy right there. The draft, the Golden State Warriors select Clay Thompson from Washington State University. The 11th pick in the 2011 draft is how Clay made his way into the NBA. So, because the number 11 was everywhere in his life, he instantly knew what jersey number he had to pick 11. And once he started wearing it, it helped him make history. During his most iconic game, he scored 60 points, and it happened on just 11 dribbles. Then in 2022, 11 years after he chose the number 11, Clay won a championship, so it's still following him. I think 11 is just my life number. It just continues to follow me. Picking that number, or the number picking him, worked out big time. But the number John ja Morant picked almost had him beefing with an entire country. Jaws always worn the number 12, and he became such a star player while doing it in high school and college that at both schools, he got the number retired. So he had to carry his tradition of bringing the number into the NBA. But the night Ja got drafted, he realized there was a problem. Yeah, he was selected with the number two pick by the Grizzlies, but someone on the team not only already had his favorite number, it was one of the highest selling jerseys in the entire NBA, Yuta Watanabe. This might seem like just a random player, but he's one of the only Japanese players in the entire league. So his jersey outsold all of the top stars and made it the most popular jersey in all of Japan. So even though Ja wanted the number, for Watanabe to just change his jersey because of the new kid had potential to upset an entire country. But luckily he knew Ja had potential to become a star. So they had a conversation and Ja admitted, first it was just him congratulating me on everything. Then we got into the number talk, and I just told him I didn't want to mess anything up for him. He was like, oh, nah, it's okay. And if you want number 12, you can get it. So after mm. that, Ja got his favorite number, and not only has it helped him destroy w the NBA. W, w, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to that. Hey, shout out to that. And now we can make posts like this. Damn, Ja. It's, a good it's probably going to cost right you some fans. But one player wanted a jersey number so badly, it cost him a six figure shopping spree. Who else but LaMelo Ball? There's always been one number near and dear to LaMelo's heart. Uh, literally, dude got it tatted on his chest. Mm. To LaMelo, the number one was his everything. I mean, he wore it in high school and when he played overseas. And when LaMelo got drafted to the Hornets, he thought life was good. But his life was not going to turn out easy like Jaws did. LaMelo's future teammate Malik Monk already had the number one but he wasn't gonna give it up for anything. So LaMelo was forced to wear a number he'd never worn before. And ironically, it was the exact same number as his brother Lonzo's, too. But uh, Lonzo wasn't really feeling his bro copying him. So he even tweeted trying to convince Malik to change, saying, Ayo hey, Monk, what's good? You know you wanna be number five. But Malik still wasn't having it. The season came around, LaMelo wore his new number. And even though he was going off, he couldn't help but keep posting about the number he actually wanted. On Instagram, he was wishing for it on his birthday. Reports came out that every day, LaMelo was fighting for his jersey number to change. <laughs> and during interviews, LaMelo started being asked why he cared so much about the number. 
I ain't supposed to wear two ever again in my life. It just don't feel like you're playing for real. It's like, I don't know who this is. I don't know who number two is. I know my brother, that's it. LaMelo hated the fact he had the number two, man. So as a way to try and convince the world that he was the real number one, before he could even put the number on his back, he spent a check on his neck. LaMelo bought not one, not two, not even three, but countless chains of the number one, just so every time cameras caught him, everybody would know how badly he wanted the number. But it wasn't until one final interview that made the Hornets realize something needed to be done. Really, whenever I'm number two, I don't feel like I'm playing for real, so. And finally, the Hornets realized just how much number one meant to him. So during free agency, when Malik Monk's contract was up, they let him go sign with another team just so the number one became available. And well, LaMelo was hyped that his antics actually worked. So it wasn't long before he revealed the surprise on Instagram. And at media day, he looked happier than ever. MV1 back in a full effect. And once he put it on, he's been balling out ever since. But at least he chose his number. Another player was bullied into it. How Zach Levine got his jersey number is something nobody would expect from an NBA player. I mean, on court, he's always been fearless. Whether it's up to him to win the game with a crazy shot, uh. oh, stop it! or risking injuries just to throw down a crazy dunk. To Levine, no matter what he's doing, you always see him repping the number eight while playing like the number eight that he idolized growing up, Kobe Bryant. I just, you know, he was the reason why I partly wore number eight. Why would I want to change that? Just because, you know, he's gone now. You know, you want to keep that memory alive. But like Zach said, he only partly wears his idol's number to make sure anybody who sees him play is also remembering Kobe. The main reason Zach got the number in the first place is low-key embarrassing. See, when Zach first got drafted, he wanted to wear a number that would rep the most important person in his life, his dad. Because who better to show love to than the one man who put Zach through crazy workouts and helped him get to the league in the first place? Yeah. And since Zach's dad used to be an athlete who wore the number 14, it was exactly what Zach wanted, but couldn't have. All because his teammate Nikola Pekovic scared him to death. When I came into the NBA, Pekovic had number 14. For those who know him, he was a big human, so I didn't, I didn't feel like asking for that number, so I reverted to eight. Now, uh, <laughs> all right, I get it. I'd be scared of a player who violates grown men too. So Zach ain't alone, but at least he didn't choose his jersey number just to try and get it banned, like LeBron James did. The mystery of LeBron's numbers started in high school because he wasn't the typical teenager. He looked like a grown man going up against kids and became one of the greatest high school basketball players in history. So before he stepped on an NBA court or even graduated, fans worldwide already started calling LeBron the chosen one to become the next Michael Jordan. And ironically, Jordan is why LeBron wore the number 23. I wear number 23 because of the great Michael Jordan that's here in Charlotte. Now, at first, LeBron felt no shame in copying his idol. So once he got drafted by the Cavs, of course he snatched the number 23. And through the years, even though LeBron was accomplishing greatness all while wearing his favorite number, eventually something didn't feel right. And one night after a game, he made a shocking announcement. I think I'm gonna change my number next year. Um, I think no guy in the NBA should ever, should ever wear 23. But uh, nobody listened except LeBron. And the <laughs> next season, when he switched teams to the Heat, he chose the number six. At first, LeBron claimed he chose the number because it's what he wore in the Olympics. Um, probably six, my Olympic number. Then, he said he chose six to rep another one of his idols, Julia Serving. But we uh, all know how LeBron's always capping. And now in 2022 <laughs> on the Lakers, magically the story of... <laughs> we all know how LeBron's always capping. Why he wears six do. is completely different. It's uh, multiple reasons. Uh, one, because 23 is one of my favorite numbers as well. So, you know, two times three is six. Also, my first son, it's October 6th, the sixth day of October. I and my youngest reasons, son though. is June 14th, the sixth month of the year. So. Wow, LeBron, thank you so much for explaining two times three equals six. I, I never would have known. But whether LeBron's lying or not, he was just trying to do the right thing with his numbers. The story of Kevin Garnett's jersey number is heartbreaking. His NBA career had a wild beginning. 
After spending his childhood idolizing basketball star Malik Sealy, Garnett got drafted to the NBA and felt it was only right to honor him with one of his jersey numbers. Garnett put on the number 21, which was what Malik wore in college. Oh, and while shit, Garnett shit, man, for he back. I'm wondering why I can't lean the back, y'all. Becoming a star, till he I'm eventually like, caught oh, the attention man. of Malik. Can't wish we get and that Malik was so impressed with the player Garnett was becoming while wearing his number that he vowed to come team up with the kid. Now being teammates, it quickly became more than that because they started doing everything together. Once his idol, now his teammate and best friend, all of Garnett's dreams were coming true. And just when it seemed like their friendship couldn't get any better, Malik threw Garnett a surprise birthday party for him and all of his friends and family to celebrate. Garnett was feeling on top of the world and felt like nothing could go wrong. Until, <laughs> after the party, Malik <laughs> hopped in his Range Rover and started making his way home. But once he got on the freeway, Timberwolves guard, NBA veteran Malik Seeley died as a result of a head-on car collision in suburban Minneapolis. His sports utility vehicle was hit by a pickup truck which was going the wrong way on a highway. The situation had the NBA world shook, so at the very next Timberwolves game, the organization dedicated it all to Malik. But nobody was more affected by the tragedy oh, okay, than Garnett. Because not only had he just lost his best friend, on the day the two had a vacation planned, Garnett was instead attending Malik's funeral. So he didn't think he'd ever get over this, knowing he'd always be sitting next to Malik's locker and he wouldn't be there. But then Garnett remembered what Malik always told him. At that moment, Garnett realized he didn't even want to play basketball for himself anymore. He wanted to do it all for Malik. Garnett paid tribute to him wearing two Malik in the inside of the tongue of his signature shoes. He even got a Malik tattoo on his right arm so that he'd never forget it. Garnett began training unlike any way he'd ever trained. He played unlike any way he'd ever played and dedicated the rest of his career to becoming the greatest player he could be. And eventually, that led him to becoming an MVP of the league and one of the greatest power forwards in NBA history, all for Malik. Anything's possible. Anything's possible. Nah, uh, uh, that's, uh, that's, that's tough. That's tough, son. That's really an iconic moment. Anything's possible. Bro, I've seen this moment before. I'm just glad there's still some good players in the NBA. Because instead of dedicating their careers to good causes, some NBA players dedicate their entire careers to humiliate. One player even framed someone's embarrassing moment in their house. Yeah, things are getting crazy. Let me know if y'all want to see that reaction, man. But if you enjoyed this one, make sure you click on the last one on your screen right now. Um, Tell me what videos you want me to react to next. Turn on post notifications, man, and I'm out of here.